Bishop Colin, have you been involved in all three of the consultations? Yes, um, I've been involved in all three, uh, the London, Dar es Salaam, and this one. And in fact, um, Isaac Kawuki Mikasa and I organized some uh, visits at Lambeth, so it actually comes out of the Lambeth consultation. So I've been at four. So you've been one of the founders of this. Why did you think that it was essential right now? Well, one of the things I think is um, that our relationships, our informal networks, are actually as important as the formal networks are at developing those bonds of affection that we talk about so blithely. And I think that the opportunity to meet together, to talk, to um, find out about each other's families, as well as to um, talk about some of the major issues, um, bring us together uh, in ways that uh, are actually quite surprising. That's a good segue for my next question. What has surprised you in the course of this consultation? Uh, I think the thing that surprised me most, which probably shouldn't have, is that we actually want to be together. Uh, that this is a family, uh, the Anglican community is a family, and as in all families, there are conflicts that develop, but that what binds you together is actually much more important. And uh, we've talked about issues of, of marriage, of, of uh, um, po politics, obviously, but also about mission. And the fact that we are all engaged in the mission of God and God is calling us into that in our own context has been really important. Mm -hmm. There was a real, there was an interesting story in Dar es Salaam where we went to um, visit some of the outreach that the church is doing in, in some of the ghetto areas in Dar es Salaam and visiting uh, a man who was dying of AIDS and I felt intrusive into the situation and was reminded by the parish nurse afterwards that we were representing the church. We were bringing the church to this man and because we had come, the church had visited and because the church had visited, he was no longer isolated. And that just blew me away. We bring the presence of other people with us when we come. Have there been any frustrations that have emerged for you in these consultations? Not particularly. Uh, I guess one of the frustrations, uh, it, it's not a frustration, it's just a fact of life that you can't share this with everybody. Uh, relationships develop between people and uh, you can tell other people about them but they can't quite get the flavor of it uh, without actually being there. And the fact that so many people um, don't have these one-to-one -one relationships across the world is frustrating. Um, but I think that actually what, what's been most exciting about it is that um, th our testimony of, to the grace of God uh, from the last consultation was, I think, uh, a challenge to the rest of the communion to, uh, to look at the positive things that are happening within the communion as well as the negative. What has been the most significant learning for you in these consultations? Hmm. The most significant learning has been that um, uh, that we can continue to be surprised by grace. Uh, I think one of the things that has was really significant in the last time was the connection um, uh, with the with the slave trade that took place in in that triangle between uh, Britain. West Africa and North America, and how that has actually deeply colored our subsequent history and relationships with each other. Uh, it's, it's interesting that, that something that seems to me to be remote, as a Canadian in central Canada, um, has actually shaped a good part of our understanding of the communion, and we need to deal with our history. Um, the colonial and post-colonial history, uh, as, as well as the theology that, uh, that has developed. The issues that we face are not entirely theological. So how will these learnings be helpful to you or your diocese or the Anglican Communion? Well, I think in two ways. Uh, one is in the Diocese of Toronto because it is so multicultural, because people come here from all over the world and 
uh, come bearing their history, that we actually need to take uh, account of the history of the people uh, and the stories that they bring. Um, and as we engage in mission, we need to be quite aware of how those stories play out. Uh, the second thing in terms of relation with the communion is the real importance of continuing to, to have face-to-face -face meetings with people across the world. You can't, email is wonderful um, and problematic. Um, telephone calls are wonderful and problematic. Skype is great, but the face-to-face -face consultation where you actually spend a few days together living with each other makes the real difference. When we travel around the world, um, and my wife comes with me on occasion, uh, the thing that she says that is the most important is sitting at the dinner table, putting your knees under the table and having the conversations and, and you really connect with people at that point. So that has implications for the Anglican Communion. How do we extend that? Well, we talk about um, being at the table and the table is not simply the Eucharistic table. Uh, that's very important. But staying at the table is really important uh, because the conversations that develop over a period of time actually moderate the incidence of, of conflict that, that arise in any type of relationship. You know, one of the things that we talk about in, in um, vowed relationships, whether it's marriage or ordination or you know, even the baptismal vows, is staying connected even when, the, when it's difficult. And uh, I think for me, the real learning is that we need to stay connected uh, because difficulties do come and go, joys come and go. Uh, it's the long haul that's really important. And making the commitment to one another, just as we make our commitment to God, um, and uh, if we're married to our partner, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, those are, those are really critical um, commitments. Mm -hmm. And so for the communion, uh, I think one of the learnings for the communion is that um, we shouldn't give up on each other too readily. We need each other. Uh, um, there are great joys and, and benefits of, of learning from one another um, and uh, contributing to the, each other's well-being. Uh, we're part of a family. Do you have a sense that these consultations have contributed to our ability to stay together? Yes, I do. Um, very simply because uh, we discover that actually we have misperceptions of, of the ethical positions of others that, that being together helps clarify. Um, we don't always mean the same thing using the same words. Uh, we tend to use English predominantly. Uh, we do certainly in the consultation use English predominantly, but that's often the third, fourth, or fifth language of some of the people. And and we know that uh, North American and Canadian versions of English are different than British, than are different than than American. So having to to spend some time in sorting out uh, what we actually mean and sometimes sorting out for ourselves what we actually mean, has been uh, a great benefit. And this consultation does that. What are your hopes for the future coming out of this consultation? This particular consultation, I, I think, is just uh, a continuing broadening. Uh, every consultation has included a few new members and some who have not been able to come. But isn't that the way with life, you know, some new people come, some people go. So I think just the gradual extension of this um, uh, process, it's not an elaborate process. Um, it means there's some expenditure to bring people together. But other than that, it's not, it's actually a pretty simple process. We sit down and talk about a topic. Um, and we're talking about how how the mission of the church uh, is being fulfilled in each of our contexts and how we can help one another in that, what we can learn from one another. 
It's a simple conversation. When we gather together as individuals, um, in, in, uh, as friends and family, we don't come with a preset agenda for the most part. And there are times when having a, a preset agenda, having a formal consultation, having um, papers presented, all that is very important. And other times that the informal sharing meals together, going for a walk together, makes all the difference. Both so, and. So trying to continue to connect informally will be an important outcome of these consultations. We've been involved, um, as you well know, with the continuing Andaba process, which is a very elaborate process. Uh, I think that's been extremely important because that's been given an in-depth conversation mm -hmm. to, uh, in, in our case, uh, uh, 24 people. But um, in this case, it's, it's, a, it's a, a much looser, um, gentler process. It's also shorter. Uh, and I think both have a place. Um, exchange programs have a place. Letter writing has a place. Uh, a gathering like the Lambeth Conference, bringing you know, 700 bishops together has a place. Um, we need to develop additional ways of meeting each other. Uh, I think one of the, the issue, the, one of the things that has come from the, the controversial issues in the last 10, 20 years in the, in the life of the communion is actually highlighted how much the communion means, uh, much more than most people were aware of uh, on the local level, certainly in, in Toronto, about the Anglican communion today than they did 20 years ago. Um, and the interesting thing is that in spite of the conflict, people's desire is to, to be together. We, there's no desire, that's actually one of the surprises in a sense, there's no desire to separate. Mm -hmm. None. So we are certainly grateful for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.